Good order. I'm Mark Patterson. I represent uh, the new Secretary of State, Walter Mosley. And uh, hey. let me introduce the rest of the board. Jill's on the line. Hi, I'm Jill Faber, representing Attorney General Letitia James. Thomas Fuller, representing Dr. James McDonald for the Department of Health. Okay, so our meeting has begun. I don't have any particular opening remarks other than, again, to thank you for uh, moving the meeting up early. Um, uh, uh, first order of business is mm -hmm. to approve the minutes of the past meeting as distributed. Um, do have anybody have any corrections or concerns or changes to the minutes? Uh, Mark, just to point out, we're actually putting two separate sets of minutes. Okay. Yep. So you should probably take them one at a time. No. Good. Tell me which we're doing first. Um, May, May 8th. All right. We have the May 8th meeting minutes. Does anybody have any uh, concerns about them? Any suggested changes? No? Hearing none, I'm going to motion, make a motion to approve the minutes of the May 8th meeting as distributed. I'll second that. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second Aye. meeting is when? Yeah, thank you, Joe. Second meeting is the May 23rd. May 23rd. Special oh, the special meeting. Um, uh, does anybody have any corrections or changes to the minutes of the May 23rd meeting? Mm -hmm. Either we're getting good or we're not paying attention. Um, okay, mm -hmm. uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of May 23rd. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Joe. Um, the uh, legislation report. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, this is Rob Vanderblas, Council's Office. Uh, the proposed regulations on natural organic reduction, the, the division and I continue to make progress on assessing the comments uh, we have received on uh, natural organic reduction regs. Uh, legislative report briefly, I would just like to go over uh, those bills that passed both houses. Uh, A4613B, S2414B would amend the general municipal law to provide for an annual adjustment to the Department of Veterans Affairs for reimbursement for certain federal, veterans' funerals. Uh, A3686 and S6285 would amend the not-for-profit corporation law in relation to cemetery trust funds. This would implement uh, total return investing for permanent maintenance and perpetual care funds. A7476 and S5939 uh, is in regard to Albany Rural Cemetery filing a certificate of incorporation with the Department of State, uh, which would first have come to the cemetery board. And A7387 and S8366 would amend the anti combination law in relation to the grandfathered status of certain crematories in the town of Toronto. Okay, we don't pen, those bills are passed but not signed. Correct. So that, uh, in law, and we don't generally comment at this point on pending uh, legislation. Anything else, Rob? I uh, no, that was it. Any questions from the board? Not here. Okay, thank you, Rob. Uh, we can move to the division report. Uh, okay, sorry. So we have, um, first give you a staffing update. We have three active recruitments. So one for a senior accountant vacancy in Albany, and one, two investigator ones. One is in Binghamton. The other is a new position in Syracuse to... Um, so that uh, Mike Seelman will be free to actually supervise and do higher level tasks and not also cover the largest territory in the state in the state while trying to supervise the rest of the investigators. Um, those are pending. Um, other than that, we have three Cemetery 101 scheduled. Two of them, I believe, are on our website already. Uh, one is Mar June 24th in Suffolk County. I think I put down Nassau County, but it's uh, on the thing Mark off to fix that. But it's actually in Hopog, so Western Suffolk, um, at uh, O'Connor Davies' office. They volunteered to give us space. And the next one is on uh, June 27th in uh, Lewis, New York. Contrary to popular belief, they didn't name the place after me. It's in the North Country, just off of, uh, of uh, the Northway, and the precise address is on the website. We've also got one coming up August 7th on the other side of the North Country in Adams, New York, but I don't have, that's not on the website yet. We're also hoping to add one in sometime in July, I think, in, uh, in uh, Rochester. Whitehaven Memorial Park has graciously offered to host one. Uh, we're still looking for spots, uh, spaces to offer them. Um, 
love to get another one in the southern tier, and I'd love to get one other one in uh, in the Mohawk Valley. So uh, if anybody knows the space, please let us know. And I think that is it for today. Alicia, you want to do the um, annual reports, or do we not have any update yet? I don't have it's the beginning of the next year, so we're not going to have much. It's slow. They're trickling in. I mean, typically, most cemeteries are on a calendar year, so we get a whole ton of them by March 31st. If they're on extension, we'll get them in April and May, and then it really slows down again until the following year. Although there are obviously some cemeteries that are on a non-calendar fiscal year. Okay. Any the questions of the Lewis on the original report? We'll do our uh, business vandalism report and then the applications. Lisa. I posted the vandalism report. Um, one thing to note, there really weren't there weren't any additional <coughs> payments out from last month. So the stats remain the same same as far as what's been paid out. Um, pretty much status quo as far as you know spending down the two million. We got almost all of it spoken for based upon what's already been approved in prior years this year and what's on the agenda today and what is in the pipeline for future applications. Any okay. questions? No questions. Uh, we have five uh, applications for uh, vandalism fund, all the dangerous monuments. Uh, we'll take them in order on the agenda unless somebody else changes. Just here, the first is from Forest Lawn. Forest Lawn is in attendance. Um, we have, uh, uh, they're in Erie County and, and uh, some other places, but 70 stones in the amount of $72,966.75. Can someone present the... Uh, that would be me, that, uh, Michael Katina. Yep. Division of Cemeteries Buffalo Office. I have the three Forest Lawn applications. And the first one is for the Forest Lawn um, Cemetery in the city of Buffalo, uh, Erie County. Uh, they submitted an application for the repair of 70 hazardous monuments. I visited uh, the cemetery and confirmed that all 70 monuments appear to pose a hazard. The most recent monument was dated 1940 and the cemetery stated they do not have lot owner records for that period. They ran a legal ad uh, notice once a week for three weeks in the Ampol legal for $123.75 with no response. <coughs> so the business understanding that the cemetery has determined that the lot owners cannot be located. The, cement, the cemetery submitted uh, two repair estimates, the lowest for which of which was uh, Western New York Lawn Service for $72,843 to reset 70 monuments on concrete foundations to a depth of 42 inches and includes a 20 year warranty. Forest Lawn Cemetery are up to date on vandalism payments and I recommend the approval in the amount of $72,966.75. Okay. okay, I have a little bit to add to that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to add is that the, the documents indicated that the uh, bid solicitations were to be addressed to uh, Craig Walcott. Craig Walcott's the father of the principal of one of the bidders. Um, this obviously is, this is not, as far as long agrees, uh, consistent with their uh, procurement policy. It's also according to Forest Lawn, not exactly what happened, had his name on it, but the uh, all the submissions, the, the other materials that went out to the contractors directed that the submissions go to another officer, not him. That was the, the, the first thing um, I wanted to note. The second thing is that um, um, one of the applications actually predates their procurement policy, um, so that one may very well have gone to him. The other thing, I believe that's this one, the Forest Lawn itself yes. one, not the other two cemeteries. The other thing I'll note is this issue came up back in 2021, a similar issue came up back in 2021. The cemetery's position at the time, which is, I believe, still its position, is that 
it has not, as of yet, followed uh, the related party provisions for uh, deciding who to hire to do the work. Uh, rather, just use the lowest bid, which happens to be a related party, in coming up with the estimate. But it will, in actually bidding the job, once the board gives approval, follow the related party rules in considering who to give it to. That was also true in their 2021 application, which ultimately after, a, there was a slightly different issue there because in that case there were no outside bids. There was only a bid from the related party and a bid from Forest Lawn itself. In this case, there is an outside bidder. Um, the board back in February of 21 tabled that application for either a month or two, I forget which, to allow to try to get the cemetery to solicit outside bids, which they ultimately attempted and failed to do. In this case, there is an outside bidder. So um, we're pre prepared to recommend approval as of now. We would, of course, like to see subsequent, as part of the cemetery's report, so, um, on, on the use of the funds, subsequent compliance with the related party rules when they actually select a contractor. Do we have any other questions on this application? I would only factually supplement that in addition to the one other bidder, the, the cemetery relayed that they uh, received one response uh, from a, a, a further monument dealer that declined to bid and uh, sent two uh, requests to other monument dealers who simply did not respond. So in a total of five monument dealers were queried. Uh, for, for this work. Yeah, unfortunately, this is not unusual anywhere in the state. It's hard to get people to bid on these jobs. Secretary, anything to add? No, I would just add um, that, that management did follow our internal conflict of interest policy to assure internal compliance and the board will follow our existing adopted policy for related party transactions. It'll be reflected in the board minutes. Great. If there's no other questions, I'll make a motion to approve the application of Forest Lawn for uh, 70 monuments in the amount of $72,966.75. I'll second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. The application is approved. The next is from uh, uh, Forest Lawn Lakeside for 26 monuments in Erie County, about $26,602.75. Mike, you're going to do that again? Once again, Michael Katina. Uh, the Forest Lawn Cemetery Lakeside is a suburban cemetery in the town of Hamburg, Erie County. I submitted an application for the repair of 26 hazardous monuments. I visited the cemetery and confirmed all 26 monuments appeared to pose a hazard. The most recent monument is dated 1983, and the cemetery stated they do not have lot owner uh, records for that period. Uh, they ran a legal ad um, notice once a week for three weeks in the Ampol Eagle for $123.75 with no response. It is the division's understanding that the cemetery has determined that the lot owners cannot be located. The cemetery submitted two repair bids, uh, the lowest of which is from Washington, New York Lawn Service for $26,479 to reset 26 monuments on concrete foundations to a depth of 42 inches, including a 20 year warranty. Um, there were, um, as with the last application, um, three others who uh, of course on solicited bids from but did not receive any. <clears throat> Forest Lawn Cemetery are up to date on the vandalism payments, and I recommend our approval in the amount of twenty six thousand six hundred two dollars and seventy five cents. Questions? Anything from? Uh, no. The, the circumstances are the same in this one as, as the last. Okay. Right. Uh, no other questions. I'll make a motion to approve the application of Forest Lawn Lakeside uh, 
uh, for uh, repairing dangerous monuments in the amount of $26,602.70. And I'll amend both the last two to say subject to the availability of funds. Uh, right. Strictly speaking, you're amending the last one and adding it to this one. Okay. Uh, 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 second, the amendment. I did it without getting poked. Um, and I need a second. You got a vote. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Application is approved as amended. Uh, next one is Forest Lawn uh, St. Matthew Cemetery in Erie County. 28 monuments, $29,790. Go ahead. 26. Once again, Michael Katina. Uh, Forest Lawn Cemetery St. Matthews is a suburban cemetery in the town of West Seneca, Erie County. They submitted an application for a repair of 28 hazardous monuments. I visited the cemetery and confirmed that all 28 monuments appear to pose a hazard. The most recent monument was dated uh, 1937 and the cemetery stated they do not have lot owner records for this period. They ran a legal notice once a week for three weeks in the M old eagle for $180 with no response. It is the division's understanding that the cemetery has determined that the lot owners cannot be located. The cemetery submitted two repair estimates, the lowest of which is from Western New York Lawn Service for $29,610 to reset uh, 28 monuments on the concrete foundations and a depth of 42 inches and includes a 20 year warranty. Forest Lawn Cemetery, uh, again, they did uh, receive the three other, they did solicit three other bids, which um, they received either no reply or denial to bid. Uh, Forest Lawn Cemetery are up to date on their vandalism payments, and I recommend approval in the amount of $29,790. Any additional questions? Rob, do you have anything to add? No. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the application of Forest Lawn St. Matthews in Erie County in the amount of $29,790.00 uh, subject to the availability of funds. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Application is approved. Uh, next one is Fort Plain Cemetery in Montgomery County, 49 minus in the amount of $75,690.50. That one is me. Good morning, Len Breen from the division. We have uh, an application from Fort Plain, which is a uh, medium sized cemetery located in the village of Fort Plain in Montgomery County. They submitted an application for the restoration of 49 hazardous monuments. I visited the cemetery and I did determine that all of these monuments were leaning dangerously and um, in need of repair. Uh, the newest monument is dated from 1907, but the, most of these monuments are very old and the cemetery uh, doesn't have any records uh, dating back that far. And they did run a legal ad in the Daily Gazette for three consecutive weeks with no response. We have two estimates for the repair, one from Humphrey and one from McPhee. The lowest estimate is from Humphrey for $75,320. And uh, both estimates proposed to pour the foundations in depth of 42 inches and they offer a 10 year warranty. The cemetery is up to date with the vandalism and assessment fees and uh, I recommend approval in the amount of $75,690.50. Uh, Rob, anything to add to the discussion? No. What's wrong with that third bid for $298,000? Yes, that was... Uh, <laughs> They thought that they had to get three, I, although I told them they, they only were required to get two estimates for, for the application. They provided the third, which was, you know, as you see, it's it's way over. So I, I don't know how they reached that, uh, you know, conclusion of, of, but it's way out of, you know, line with the, with the other two. So, but I included it because they submitted. All right. Well, it never you. hurts to get more bids. Uh, they're, they're not charging. No. Okay, right. Thank you. Yep. Um, no other questions from the board? For the division? Uh, I'll make a motion to recommend 
approval of Fort Plains Application Center in, in Montgomery County in the amount of $75,690.50 subject to the eligibility funds. Do I have a second? No second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Applications approved. Uh, last one is from Van Vetchen Cemetery in Montgomery County. Apologies, the, uh, the um, agenda, but no other document in, in the packet has an error. It is Van Vechten Cemetery. Um, it's spelled correctly everywhere but on the agenda. My bad. Our apologies. Uh, that's an uh, application uh, for 19 monuments in the amount of $22,521.37. Is there someone who wants to present that to the board? That one is mine also, Len Green for the division. So we have Van Vecken Cemetery, which is a very small cemetery in Pattersonville in Montgomery County. They submitted an application for 19 hazardous monuments. I did visit the cemetery and I was able to determine that all 19 are indeed leaning dangerously. All these monuments are very old and the cemetery doesn't have any records. Uh, of the lot owners, the, the uh, newest mine was dated from 1922. And they, uh, based on the information provided, uh, we have determined that the lot owners cannot be found. And the cemetery did also run a, a legal notice in the Daily Gazette for three consecutive weeks, and they had no response to the notice either. Uh, included is two applications, one from Humphrey and one from McPhee. Uh, the lowest of the two is, is from Humphrey for $22,450. Both estimates pre uh, proposed to uh, forward a depth uh, foundations at a depth of 42 inches, and they offer a 10-year warranty. The cemetery is up to date with vandalism and assessment fees, and I recommend approval for this application in the amount of $22,521.37. No comments from council. Any other questions? No. All right. Uh, if we no other questions, I'll make a motion to approve and effect in. Is that right? Yes. A cemetery in Montgomery County to uh, repair uh, 19 monuments at the price of $22,521.37 <clears throat> subject to the eligibility funds. Do I have a second? I'll second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Motion. The application is approved. That completes the uh, vandalism applications. Uh, we have some other business. Uh, Mount Pleasant Cemetery, a new report. Carrie, uh, you want to do this? Uh, hang on a second. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mount Pleasant Cemetery in Santa Mariches, Suffolk County is asking for board approval to add an additional retort to its crematory. The crematory currently has six retorts. Two were added in 2020 to accommodate cremation routes during the COVID pandemic, and one more was added in 2022 specifically to accommodate caskets and oversized cremations, both of which take longer and require longer cool down periods in between. This seventh retort would help the cemetery handle the increased demand from the surrounding area from the funeral homes there for same day and next day cremation service. The model N2OAA retort is designed by and would be installed by BNL Cremation Services or Systems, excuse me, and that's the same company that has uh, supplied the cemetery's existing retorts. Cremation rates in the area have been increasing pre-COVID, and that's about 2019, even though um, the area population has remained level. And as the crematory increased its capacity by adding these retorts, its actual cremation numbers also increased. This additional retort is going to allow the crematory to keep pace with the area demand for its services. The cost of the project is estimated at $146,589, and that would be paid for with money from the general fund. The cemetery's general fund had a balance of $3,829,893 at the end of 2023. A required DEC permit has not been obtained. It will be obtained after state approval is obtained, and no other permits are required. The cemetery is financially stable. They um, they can afford this project and they're going to easily recoup their initial output uh, with the cremation rate. I recommend approval of the project. Council. 
<coughs> uh, briefly, uh, so uh, part of the project uh, contemplates some um, welding work, and uh, what the cemetery is proposing is welding to be performed by a company that is owned by the president, Mr. Tevins. And so uh, on page 101 of the packet, you can see the, the board minutes uh, dated from the end of May, uh, where the, the board came together. Uh, Mr. Tevins presented some background information. Uh, the minutes reflect that uh, he was then excused from the meeting. Uh, the minutes further reflect that an employee of the cemetery uh, had attempted to secure other bids for the welding, uh, was unable to do so. Uh, the board then deliberated on uh, the cost, which is about 4500 and determined that it was reasonable and in the best interest of the cemetery uh, to proceed with Mr. Tevin's uh, company to perform the welding. Uh, so it would appear that they have followed the procedures uh, to address a uh, related party transaction. Love that. Uh, any other questions, Bill? Application from the board? No. No other comments from staff? Okay. And and uh, the, this, the market sustains this overall in the area? It does. So the, uh, yeah, go ahead, Gary. I'm sorry. It seems to, uh, the more retorts he's added, the numbers go up. He, they do, uh, uh, the area really does seem to depend on this service, and they do offer this same day and next day service now, and more and more funeral directors are aware of it, so they're asking for it, and the families are asking for it, so it seems to be increasing. Are there other cars in the area that are, might be affected? Um, so there are three other crematories in the area, one of which is based at a cemetery, um, two of which, one of which is a grandfathered standalone. One of which is a non grandfathered standalone, uh, or a standalone that has no funeral home connection, so it's not need of grandfathering. Um, all of them have either remained stable or slightly increased their cases as, um, as this crematory has gone from having three retorts to six. So I don't think a seventh is going to really change that picture dramatically. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions of the applicant? Any other comments by the staff? Uh, if not, I'll make a motion to approve the application of Mount Pleasant Cemetery uh, to add a new retort uh, to their um, resources. Do I have a second? Second. Motion seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The application is approved. Next is Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, a water main project. Uh, who's presenting that? That's me. Hold on a sec. Let me open that up. I don't think I need it. Uh, so the village of Sleepy Hollow has a water main that runs under what I think is the easternmost north-south road in Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, Sleepy Hollow Avenue. Uh, runs under it for, I forget exactly how long the stretch is, maybe a quarter of a mile. Um, and it's... Um, hasn't been able to be used in years because it leaks. The, there is a development, Sleepy Hollow is on the east side of Route 9 uh, Broadway. Um, there is a the new development going up on the west side of Route 9 that needs water. The village has no way of bringing water to that development without um, reviving this unused uh, water main line. It's gonna have to run through the cemetery uh, the cemetery isn't paying anything for this. The village is going to, the main impact on the cemetery is they're going to have to rip up and close for about three weeks Sleepy Hollow Avenue. Um, they're going to have to take out, they just dig down under it to um, put in the, um, put in the, to put in the new main. Um, during that time, people visiting graves adjacent, there are no graves on the east side of Sleepy Hollow Avenue that slopes down to a river. Um, on the west side, there's a steep slope leading to a bunch of graves. Those are going to have to be accessed from the next road over, the name of which escapes me, but it's in my report. Um, the issue is that, the, 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 the reality is that because of the steep slope up from Sleepy Hollow Avenue, unless you're in that first grave along there, you would be coming from the other road anyway. 
because it's just too steep to go up that way. Uh, you would access it by going down, so that's not going to change most people's vis visiting experience. The one impact it might have is because there aren't really graves along that road that you would stop at and visit, it's a good way to get through the cemetery from north to south, so that's temporarily going to be unavailable. But they've got three or four other north-south roads that will be fully available during this period. There is some direct benefit to the cemetery from the project as well as just being a good neighbor to the village. Um, they, their garage is going to have a uh, du direct and increased water source, their office comp their, their maintenance complex, because it's right off of this, this, um, this um, water main. So that's going to increase their own water capacity for their equipment, um, which I don't know how much water you use for equipment, but it will allow them to have water there, which will, will improve that situation directly. Um, the village apparently has, so I want to just talk about the uh, environmental review. The village has apparently already determined that this is a uh, type two action under Seeker because it's a repair of an existing, uh, um, of an existing thing. Um, they adopted a resolution to that effect. Resolution inadvertently has a typo in it and cites the wrong provision of Seeker, but they've clarified that no, of course, they, I was very proud of myself for having caught that, uh, but they, 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 they say, of course, we meant two instead of 20, and that's the repair provision. It was pretty obvious from the context that that's what they meant, so we have not done an independent Seeker analysis on this because um, it does appear to be a uh, type two uh, project. Um, we're, we're simply, our proposed resolution is simply recommending approval subject to all other required approvals. I believe that the village already has all the required approvals. I'll also note that the cemetery itself is getting no approvals. So the contingency is not on the cemetery getting any more approvals because they ain't getting none. It's on the project having all the approvals required before they start. And there's no... We did not put a dollar figure in this. I should have talked about this in the division report when we can. Um, actually, let's finish this one and then I want to go back to Mount Pleasant very briefly. Um, uh, but the, in, this, in this case, we, um, there's no dollar figure associated with the approval because they ain't spending any money. And the, the, you know, there's no other benefit to them as a result of their inconvenience or yeah, they're not paying them for it, no. But again, it's not because because there aren't really graves to be visited from this section of Sleepy Hollow, or there are very few at least, it's not a major inconvenience. Your traffic's just going to have to go north-south through different routes. Okay. And Council? I have nothing to add to Lewis's excellent recitation. I mean, I mean the, theoretically, the benefit is they're going to have a brand new road there, but the road's actually in pretty good shape, so I don't know how much of a benefit that will be. Anybody else have questions of the application? No. Jill? No? No. Hearing none, I will make a motion to recommend approval of the application from Sleepy Hollow Cemetery uh, to have a water main pipe installed <coughs> on their property, subject to uh, the uh, village getting all necessary and required permits. Are good? They'll end up with some sort of easement there, or something like that. I don't know that there. I, I actually don't know whether there's an easement. Um, they're not creating any new easement. They're already had not previous some sort of. Like there already is um, so an easement. Um, otherwise, they're just going to have some kind of temporary license to come in and, and do the work. Repairing. Yeah. Right. It's not. No, I asked that out of order. So. Yeah, I, um, I don't think there's. I. Put it this way, if there is, if anyone's contemplating a permanent easement here, nobody's told us, and we're, I'm specifically asking not to approve such a thing, because we don't have it before us, and you shouldn't approve that. Uh, I'm not, um, okay, um, so, uh, where was I? Did I? You're gonna make a motion. Oh, I made the motion, there's a second. Thank you. second. Thank you, and, oh, it takes a village. Uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. I actually want to go back to Mount Pleasant. I apologize. Motion uh, is approved. Go ahead. 
Um, there's something that we missed there, and I probably should have addressed this in the division report. Uh, with the application from May on um, Oakwood, where the Oakwood and uh, White Plains, where, White Plains, uh, Mount Kisco, uh, where the um, um, project between its approval back in 2019 and now had more than doubled in cost, we ultimately approved it. But um, they had to come back because at the time, the board's practice was to put a dollar amount in its approvals. Uh, we think that that was a good practice. I'd like to get back to it. Uh, I don't think we need to change your, our original recommendation for the Mount Pleasant resolution was to include a cost not to exceed their projected cost. Um, I don't think we need to go back and amend that resolution in this case because when you're buying a retort, the, there's really, if they, 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 my understanding is in this case, they're prepared to sign that contract as soon as they get our approval letter, mm -hmm. uh, or they've already signed the contract, they're prepared, they're prepared to close on it, and the rest of it is really trivial. But going forward, we're going to be including dollar amounts in proposed resolutions for the cemetery to spend the money, so that if there's a material change in, in the amount, they have to come back to you. So. We don't have a situation where a cemetery is approved for a $100,000 project and it's very clear that if it costs three hundred, they need to come back to the board. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't think you need to revisit this one, although okay. our, we kind of missed our own recommendation here. Uh, but going okay. forward, with, I, I, we're, we're going to be paying attention to that. Okay, thank you. Mark, got any comments about that? Okay, I want to keep moving forward then. Uh, given that, Council, you agree with me? You uh, well, you know, I think when the cemetery board is approving an application, they're appro approving the application in accordance with the information submitted from the cemetery. So, you know, you're not approving a major alteration to build a retort and then have them construct a playground or right. what have you. Right. So I, I think it is implicit in approving the application. You're approving the application in accordance with the cost that they presented to the cemetery board. I, I don't uh, see any reason not to do what Lewis suggested with a specific dollar figure in the approval, but I also concur that I think that that's implicit in what the cemetery board approves. Thank you. All right, so moving on, Nassau uh, Central Cemetery. Okay. I'm going to get started on this one. Len may chime in because he was the one at the meeting, and uh, Mr. Fleming here was, is in his capacity as town supervisor may have something to say about it as well. Um, this is a uh, small, largely inactive cemetery in the town of Nassau. Um, the, uh, <laughs> for want of a better term, the trustees that had it uh, were not willing to or able, frankly, to continue. Um, the town worked with them to try to find other people who would be willing to step up as services, officers or directors, with no luck. Um, there was a special lot owners meeting on May 2nd. Um, there were a few people who showed up. No one was willing to serve going forward on the board, uh, let alone three people, which you would need for, for, for a uh, board. Um, so in our view, that satisfies the requirement that there's no, and the, and the board members announced that they would resign effective immediately. Um, I think the, to the extent necessary, one of the board members might be willing to rescind that uh, resignation solely for the purpose of an orderly transition of funds at the bank from the cemetery to the town. Um, I know it's not in my report, but I know there was some discussion of that. I don't think that has any bearing on the division of the board's on our or the board's determination because they had resigned and no one was willing to continue. Uh, we calculated whether the cemetery would be able to continue operating on a purely maintenance basis if there was someone to operate it. We found they were going to run out of money within a year. Um, the cemetery is unusual in that they don't seem to have a general fund. They only have a permanent maintenance fund. However, the vast, there's very little money, but more than over half the money in their permanent maintenance fund is in fact retained income. So it could properly be characterized as general fund for our purposes. Nevertheless, they're going to run out of money within a year. If without um, uh, uh, without any additional funds, which there's no realistic prospect of them uh, of them realizing the uh, rest of the the technical requirements of the regulation are spelled out in my report. Um, I'll also note that obviously the town is on notice of that because they're here. Um, so if you want to hear from them, uh, uh, council, do you have anything else to add? I just uh, because you know we're. 
still new with these. Uh, what the reg uh, asks the board to do is to either confirm or reverse the determination uh, of the division or seek additional information. So if the board were to uh, you know, be in accordance with the division's determination, it would be confirming the determination of abandonment of the division. Okay. Uh, are you interested in speaking on this issue, uh, Jim? Uh, just David Fleming, Town Supervisor, Town of Nassau, different capacity than I'm usually here. Um, I just want to publicly thank the board members who held on for a long time um, at their own personal cost to keep the cemetery operating. They did a great job um, as best they could, and there clearly is not enough funds. The town participated in the meetings trying to get folks to engage. Um, and uh, since the resignations has stepped in to provide some basic operation for mowing to just get them through the Memorial Day as they had requested. Um, so the board's ultimate decision and finding is to affirm the division's position that town board is um, ready to assume operation and maintenance of the cemetery at their Thursday meeting. So. At the risk of speaking for Mr. Fleming, um, my understanding is that the town will ultimately seek abandonment funds, but that's not before us right now. I can say that that is largely the case, yes. All right, <laughs> any other questions uh, on this uh, determination? If not, I will make a motion that we affirm, confirm, confirm the determination of the uh, abandonment of the cemetery to the town of Nassau. Uh, I think that's right, yeah, okay. Uh, second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Hi. And the uh, determination is confirmed. Um, we have on the, uh, uh, another determination of the banner in Arcade Rural Cemetery. Uh, should we represent that? So this is this one's actually kind of a little bit of a tragic story because this was a cemetery that was actually um, a viable concern with an active board. Um, the big issue here is that a large um, a, a lar and Michael Katina, jump in if I, I screw up anything. Uh, a large, it's not really a retaining, I guess you could call it a retaining wall. A large wall uh, collapsed <coughs> in the cemetery, potentially destabilizing some graves. Um, it's going to be a very expensive fix. There was a lot of back and forth as to whether this could be the subject of a hazardous monument application. It looks very much like the silver mount application that, the, that this board approved a couple of months ago. That said, the cemetery's board at this point essentially said, we, we, we just can't do this anymore. This is too much for us, given you know, they, they were facing headwinds already, but this was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, Michael made diligent efforts working with the town uh, to try to identify people who'd be willing to continue. We discussed ways in which um, the cemetery could seek funds either through municipal assistance or coming to us with a hazardous monument application to pay for for the wall, um, it was that was unsuccessful. Um, there, it just didn't look real. It wasn't realistic to to. Uh, there was no realistic path to getting that done with the board as it was. Um, the cemetery has next to no unrestricted funds, so it's going to run out of. I want to see exactly the date here. They are going to run out of. I believe they have more. Even if you left aside the retaining wall, they would last a little bit longer than arcade would have. Okay, if you leave aside the retaining wall, they might, uh, Sarah's calculation has them at about approximately five years. On the other hand, that retaining wall is there, and there's no guarantee that somebody else is going to pay for it, which that would wipe them out instantly if they had to pay for that right now. What's the town? The town of Arcade. Yep. Uh, we mailed this to the uh, town supervisor, we emailed this to the town supervisor on May 29th and I haven't heard anything from the town in objection. The town is well aware that this is coming their way. I am confident that we will be getting an abandonment application for funds from the cemetery, from the town for this cemetery, but we haven't gotten those yet. Council? Uh, no further comments from Council. Any other questions on this uh, determination? Michael, did I miss anything important? No. Um, the 
only thing is the, the town supervisor was actually at most of these reorg meetings, including the last one. He was very active in the in the process trying to save the cemetery. Are they uh, with us today? Do you know? I don't believe so. Anybody else that wishes to speak on this matter? Uh, if not, I'll make a motion to confirm the division's determination that the Arcade Rural Cemetery is in fact abandoned uh, to the town of Arcade. Any? I'll second. Second that. That's okay. Motion is good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chairman is confirmed. Uh, the next cemetery board meeting is scheduled for July 15th. That's a rescheduled uh, date uh, to accommodate uh, other schedules. Um, it will be uh, here in Albany at this, this room at the normal time, 10.30, but different, not the second Tuesday. Um, we usually always take comments from the public. Um, uh, is there anyone wishing to address online, wishing to address the board? Uh, on any issue before us? There being none, is there anybody else present who would like to comment on uh, any issue before the board? I just want to thank uh, the cemetery. Please introduce yourself, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Julie Snyder, CEO of Forest Lawn Cemetery in uh, Erie County. Um, I just want to thank the cemetery board for their review and approval for the monuments. Thank you. Uh, David. Uh, David Fleming from NISAC. I just want to uh, thank the division and the board for the enactment of the abandoned cemetery regs. Uh, I've now having witnessed them in operation personally, um, but also I think what's unknown to a lot of folks who are not having a lot of experience with the division and the cemetery board to see the work of the staff that went into it. And, uh, and publicly commend Len Green for his efforts working with uh, Nassau Central Cemetery in particular, where they really he really did try to help them uh, right to the end. But uh, it became clear that in some instances, like we've seen with Arcade and Nassau Central, that um, sometimes there is no choice and that there has to be a town abandonment and that there is now a process that brings all parties together, whether they be for merger with other entities or for um, a turnover. So thank you. That's great. It's, it has been an accomplishment or an improvement. Any other people who will address the board or interested? If not, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn uh, the June Cemetery Board. Second that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Aye. Thank you all for coming.